What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Mike and Bill show with me, your co-host, Bill Tindo, and your host, Mike, the Quest Anniversary Talent Scout. Uh, this episode is brought to you by no one and nothing. We're just doing stuff. Yeah. Very important anniversary coming up, Billy. Less than a month away. Quest anniversary. What is it? Quest anniversary, Billy. That's what I talk doing. about it, Mike. 26? Yeah. Yes. So last year I procrastinated. Well, I didn't procrastinate, but I tried to plan everything the week of because it fell on a weekend. That seemed and like it, a poor idea. It did. Yep. I ended up being on like six podcasts and had a bunch of stuff all happening that week. I'm not doing that this year. So I'm just going to do the whole month of June quest stuff uh -huh. and spread it all out. So I'm also trying to get a hold of a bunch of extra people early. So I'm now the quest anniversary talent scout. So it's going Except, pretty good overall. Yeah. We've got some artists, some people that want to donate some products um, a bunch of people are going to be streaming. A bunch of friends um, are making videos and stuff. So there'll be a lot of quest content for the month of June. June. Have you had your interview with East Arland yet? Did that happen on your other show? Had it has not happened yet. Uh, family in town for them yeah. right now. Uh, I don't want to reveal too much oh, about yeah. it. Because yeah. I'm 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 framing in a certain way, Mike. You know, because uh, the person that does all their social media is never out front. You know, At, like it, it's all about the accounts and what they're doing for the accounts and stuff like that. But like nobody knows who that person is, really. So I kind of want to like talk about that. You know, what it's like to be a popular creator that. Uh, People see your stuff all the time and don't know really much about you. So sorry, Billy, I lost you for a second. You froze up. That's all right. I was just saying I'm doing a story like behind like the, the man behind the curtain, you know? I think you froze again, Mike. Gotcha. Yeah. 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 Okay. They told me that they uh were looking forward to this weekend when they could have their peace and quiet and silence again. So yeah, yeah. Well, um, also, uh, I was supposed to do an interview yesterday, and uh, man, I've just been so busy and all of that. I, I didn't get around to it, but uh, pretty big <coughs> gaming, pretty big gaming creator. I mean, like the the biggest gaming creator that I've had yet, for sure, or creator at all. I did, um. Well, you had uh, Ride the other day, didn't you? Yeah, Treaky Boy. I watched that one. He's pretty yeah, big creator oh, now. Yeah, Treaky was pretty funny. I, I really enjoyed him. Um, so, uh, and I also did They Call Me Hat Guy. He's got like 40,000 YouTube subscribers. He gets really good um, views and stuff like that. But he doesn't really make video game content. He does reaction content, you yeah. know? So... And uh, obviously, I asked uh, a friend of the show, someone that's been on our show before uh, in the first season, Steve Casino. So yeah. Steve, Steve's going to have some free time this week, and uh, we're going to do that. Um, I actually had one person turn me down. Straight up told me no. It wasn't somebody I, like, suggested, was it? No, it didn't come from you. No. That's how I know. I'm sending it in the private chat. The oh. person that said yes is already up People. there. I but don't know the... that person. What? Yeah, I don't know who that is. So that's the person that told me no. Um, friends with a friend of ours. And uh, just yeah. straight up told me no. Nah, I'm not interested. And I'm like, okay. Oh, Okay, he was, was probably a little bit politer than that, but it was almost that short, you know? You should. I don't know why I haven't thought about messaging him, but you should definitely get Joe onto that show as well. He would be a good interview. Joe, Joe Burry? Burry. Yeah. yeah. Especially since he's so much closer. He's adding now. I'm not, I don't want to like 
I do want to plug him, but I don't want to blow up his spot, but he's adding the Famicom disc system to his all Famicom book because he's got nice. He's almost done with that. So he's he's got a lot of extra stuff going on now for that excellent book that's coming out. So I'm sure he would like to talk about it. He likes to talk. So yeah. So and we've had him informal we've had him on the show before. Thing. Yeah. And he's fun. nice guy. Mike, we've had some pretty cool guests. Mm -hmm. But now I'm glad to push those guests off to a guest driven show as opposed to making them listen to us talk about uh the stuff we talk about billy yeah nice video games and uh what billy's been doing in his free time and what uh things are happening and what noises his dogs are making these are all very important subjects on this show so i've heard from our focus groups that they like uh, news and not so much gaming content at the end of the news, but we're doing what we want to do. Even if it is a lot of news, it's still our choice. We're not being told. That's right. We want to do it. That's right. We don't. We don't have enough viewers to be uh, ratings driven. You know. No, I can't be. I can't be. And even if we did, I, I can't be coerced into doing things on the internet. I don't want to do. We we can't. Box Mike in. No, and I'm impossible <laughs> to be bought. So it's. Oh, Mike, how long did it take me to get you to do uh, video? Well, we always did video, but we Please only do. released the audio. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm still hippie on this. I don't know if I want it. At some point, I'll just, uh, you know file a grievance and say that I don't want any of my faces on here and you got to take all the videos down and that'll be the end of that. But we did take uh, a week off last week. We gave Billy a vacation week so he could get some stuff together, have some Billy time. So we did miss some news last week. So there will be plenty of stuff this week to catch up on. And um, we'll start the show off with one of those. This is a pretty huge story, and thankfully, because we took a week off, we got the beginning arc of the story, and now we get, like, the closing arc of the story. But um, last week, Helldivers 2, which is a very, very popular first-person shooter, um, but it's party-based, made by Sony, and uh, available not only through the PSN store, but through street, uh, through Steam, decided that they were going to finally enforce <laughs> that you had to have a PSN account even if you were playing only on Steam and never in your life. And um, they, so it was a big stink because one, the terms of service like the you know the end user license agreement since the game came out it's just been very small you know and you can miss it it's like skipping over any other thing you know that you agree to um but it's more a problem because one they didn't enact on it right away so people were allowed to buy the game on steam without having a psn account and that went on for months and then two that's dangerous because there is um, a huge number of countries in the world that do not have access. So only 73 of 190 recognized countries in the world have access to the PlayStation Network. Even there's like 10 countries that are just in Europe where it doesn't have it. And a lot of those places like um, Lithuania and, uh, you know, like the Balkan countries and stuff don't have it so that's a bunch of player um base that's being chopped out of the game well after a couple days uh playstation backtracked and they said yeah we hear you um that's our mistake we're trying to understand the pc players base we didn't know that it was you know that this was the way it is and they were screwing so many people so we're not so they backed it off entirely but now overnight um <laughs> The Helldivers 2 devs all of a sudden got a bunch of notifications that Sony is still locking now instead of 
forcing them to have PlayStation Network. Sony is manually locking countries out of the world, uh, uh, like worldwide countries, from buying games. So Estonia, like I said, uh, Latvia, Lithuania, all happened last night. Those countries can no longer even purchase the game on Steam, even though they still don't need a PSN account to play. And the devs had no idea this was happening. They had to find out through, they're on a holiday, and they had to find out through social media that the game was being locked out by Sony now overnight. So it, we went, we started with bad thing, and then Sony came to its senses, and now Sony is once again quietly doing things um, to piss off the player base of this really popular video game. So now we have to see where that's going to go. Uh, yeah, it's stupid. It's stupid. I don't think you should have to have a an account, like a, a full on account to play any game. Um, I don't know. I I just don't think it's a good idea. I think it's terrible. Shit, shite, shite, Mike. Well, it does have merit because having a PSN account makes the cross play because you can cross between Steam and PlayStation Network. So having the PSN account and having that like that makes the cross play a lot easier the matchmaking and all stuff like that. Okay. So 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 it, so why so it does not, it does go ahead. Why why would you just not do it if you want to cross play? I, I don't think it should be required. Now, if you want to if, if it's required for certain functions, like cross play, that makes sense. But required to play at all? Yeah. Well, they didn't, it was <sighs> So it's a game problem. Sony wanted to implement the PSN requirement at the beginning, but that broke the servers and they couldn't figure out why. So they spent a little while trying to fix the servers and they pushed off the PSN thing. Well, what they're slowly figuring out, you know, while they're still letting people play the game is that they still don't have their, they still don't have their stuff together, Billy. So, so uh, they were hoping that making everybody have a PSN account would fix a lot of that. Um, and it's the, but they can't fix it if people aren't playing, and it doesn't matter if they fix it if people can't play. So that, I, I don't know. It was Sony's fault to start, and then it was less Sony's fault because they backed off, and then it was Sony's fault again, and now it's also doubly their fault. And it's just not good for the game. Like obviously the the, the developers of this game just want people to play it. And having all this Sony tie-in is really hurting their numbers. And then the ability to build a player base and sequels, Hellers 3 or whatever expansion packs they want to do. Because you need people to play the game for any of that to be feasible. And it's a mess, Billy. It's a big yeah. old mess. Yep. It's messy, messy, Mike. Yeah. And that's not um, Sony's first or that was their first big story, but they continued to pile in then. Um, also, this is slightly older news. This is last week now. But uh, Square Enix, Queen X, uh, which is Sony almost exclusive at this point, um, for whatever reason, I don't know if it's for their shareholders or what, um, they came out and they publicly announced that they're going to abandon the production of previously greenlit HD console games to the tune of $140 million. So they didn't say all of the IPs that are being abandoned, but they're chopping out a bunch of games that were in production to focus they, on other things. Basically, what I understand is they're chopping out um, lesser IPs and only working on major IPs, which is problematic. It's... it's um, it's not just them. All all the game studios do it. I mean, you right. see Activision, they they only concentrate on their larger titles, their larger IPs. They have so many like mostly abandoned IPs that they could be doing great things with. Nintendo does the same thing. You're going to get a new Mario game every year. When was the last time we had a really solid Kid Icarus? What was that? The 3DS? But, you know, uh, we could we could have a fantastic kid Icarus on uh, on a uh, switch. That would be great. But you know, it's a lesser IP, and you know, so 
I don't know. I, I just think it's a, it's shite. <laughs> shit, Mike. It's shit. It is. It's, it's pretty much them saying that we're going to give you a bunch of Final Fantasy VII and nothing else for the foreseeable future. Because um, oh, they're going to allocate, might, like you, you said, their resources to... Well, we we might get get uh, Final Fantasy Dissidia. So... <laughs> Maybe, yeah, because but, it's a like things, fantasy. correct. But like you know, they also do Octopath Traveler, and everybody liked Octopath Traveler when that came out. And that, I mean, things like that, like passion projects, are probably um, that's probably it. <laughs> it's the best way to put it. Who knows yeah. what we're gonna get for um, maybe that this cuts out of some of the Dragon Quest spinoffs. I don't know about Kingdom Hearts if they had anything planned for that. Um, you know, who knows? Um, I would think I would think at this because point, they but... they were weirdly forward about the dollar amount, but they were not weirdly forward about which games they were talking right. about. Right. So. Also, they are not going to stop with Dragon Quest. Dragon Quest is absolutely massive. It's a heavyweight outside the United States. In the United States, it's a it, it would almost be a minor IP. But outside the United States, Dragon Quest is a heavyweight. No, so. I just more mean maybe, um, like, I think that they'll continue Dragon Quest, but I think that then they have to decide. Um, they were talking about doing a Monsters HD remake. They're all doing new builds games now, um, card games. Like, there's all the spinoffs uh, of Dragon Quest. And I have right. a feeling that some of that is going to end up being on the chopping block and then focusing only on... Um, this player and then the online so maybe builders maybe builders survives because that's pretty popular with the right. online community but, well it, yeah, it, does, it i mean does do companies even care about online communities anymore look what they did to little big planet with a playstation they just dipped it well yeah but that's an older game too yeah, yeah. that's true they still you still got to make money though monthly subscriptions make money so you want people to pay for your online service you have to have something to play online so at least that's what i hear i don't play video games online so yeah me either um people think i'm kind of weird for it but i don't it is what it is whatever i'm being i'm being facetious i do but it's all like really i play like animal crossing with my friends or like splatoon occasionally but nothing like that. The Switch is the only system I use online. Um, I used to play a lot of the tanks, but I haven't done that for a while because I just looked at the update and it's like 60 gigs for the next update. So I've just been staring at it, deciding whether I need to take a vacation to update my favorite game. So, <clears throat> um, Do you, you want to talk about LRG? Sure. So, uh, this is news from last week. Uh, Limited Run got busted uh, with their 3DO games, specifically D, I believe it was. Um, D for Dracula. Yeah, but it wasn't a pressed game. It wasn't a professionally pressed game. It was a burned CDR made by TDK. Um you know, it, it really gave the vibe that uh, they're like, if we buy blank disc and we can pay this guy $100, we can charge 60 bucks for this and he'll make us, you know, the 5,000 copies or whatever. You know, it, it really it really gave off the energy of uh, how cheap and shitty limited run games actually is, you know? Yep. And then they came back and they were like, oh, we didn't realize, you know, we'll be uh, replacing those with press disc. No, you knew what you did. Um, LRG, Limited Run Games, has a pretty uh, hefty track record of doing shitty stuff. They they knew what they did. And yeah. they're going to replace oh. it because they bought it. But, um, and now there's a... Um, Game they have coming out, uh, I can't remember the name of it, Hi Fi or something like that. And the company that developed the game actually just uh closed down 
Well, they didn't close down. X Hi-Fi Rush is the Hi-Fi uh, Rush. Yeah. But they didn't close down. Xbox just axed them. They were one of the studios. That's another news story we have for today. But okay. yeah, Xbox chop chop. They bought up that studio and then they chop. Now they cut them. So yeah, and Limited Run said they're still making the game. Yeah. But you know, I know I know people that have waited two years on a game from Limited Run. So definitely don't hold your breath. The the earliest I've ever heard of somebody getting something is six months. I've heard of people like ordering in stock items and it taking three months to get to them. You know, so whatever. Why don't yeah. we move right in? Man, I dropped my why why don't we move right into your story well, what, about that? But the little the little the subtext here, yeah, yeah, we will. But the subtext on run games is they've got such a such a culture now of people who don't play video games. Um, That's true. They know who their kid is, and it's people who just keep their games in boxes and brag about them. And they were – so you don't want to say they for certain knew. They did know, but they were banking on so many people not playing them that they wouldn't notice. It's like, oh, I'm they're like, just going to stay sealed anyway. So, I'm going to agree with you because I'm a member of uh, two different limited run or, you know, specialty – Companies like Limited Run because you have Special Reserve and uh, Super yeah. Rare and a couple others, um, but uh, Premium Edition that's one of them. Actually, I yep. think they're I think they're a decent company. Um, but in those groups, you're right. I would say ninety percent of the people never open the games. They just show pictures of their, you know, wall of Switch games never been opened. Yep. Yeah. So, so that's the the implication is is that they don't care. They do they do care about their sales and they do care about the happiness of their customers, but they don't care so much about the functionality of the game, all of game reservation or any of that stuff. They only care well, about uh, right. And that was the original lie. Numbers and that people was being the original satisfied. lie yeah. that they told was that they were all about game preservation. Um, yeah. If you're about game preservation, number one, you're not going to be doing limited runs of games. You're going to do as many copies as people want. Number two, you're not going to put out uh, a collector's edition of Among Us without a game that you have to download the game. You know what I mean? Like, at this point, you know, we all know you're full of shit. Um, fuck limited run. I don't care. I'll just say it. Fuck them. No, they... That's what in that. kind of the feeling, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, not a fan. Uh, also, they sent out that do I think it was Doom last year, and most of the cartridges didn't work for Switch, yeah. And then they had to replace them. It's because you're right, most people that buy from Limited Run are not going to open the games to begin with. So, how are they ever going to know that their game doesn't work or that it's a fucking that somebody burn their game on an HP pavilion from 1996, you know? And then, I mean, they have other problems too. Even the people that they do um, please, which are in general, um, the N64 community likes them because they've reprinted some cool stuff. They did do Worms Armageddon, um, which is an expensive game. So it was cheaper to buy the limited run one than to hunt a copy of Worms Armageddon. But uh, right. some of the people I got, Worms Armageddon, ended up getting the Game Boy Color version in their N64 box instead of the uh, N64 cart. It was found out immediately because a lot of the people who bought the N64 version was to actually play it because of the expensive costs, and they were getting the wrong version of the game. So even the people that they do make happy... Um, it takes still, a couple tries. Yeah, they still find their ways to... to and then they're, you know... They're, like you said, there's a bunch of other preservation. Otherwise, I don't need to. I I I I spew about that enough where it doesn't need to have their own thing today. We'll go back to Xbox. Um, so okay. the studio we were talking about was Tango GameWorks. Um, Billy brought up Hi-Fi Rush. They were one of. So there was a a point where Xbox was buying everybody. Um, what is this? Two years now, probably. Yeah. Um, where they were buying, they bought Obsidian and all those, you know, all the other stuff that they were buying because they said they wanted to put out games that that win awards. You know, they wanted to to 
like do things that made Xbox look great. And they did. Um, Hi-Fi Rush was one of them. It was critically acclaimed. Everybody loved it. <coughs> um, but yeah, now they are doing the opposite. They're, um, nobody really knows what the direction is right now. They're laying off a bunch of studios. Uh, they're making games less exclusive. Um, they said that they were offering voluntary severance agreements to producers and they quality assurance people and others. I guess mm. people were taking them. I don't. But the whole high for high rush thing is weird because that was they specifically bought Tango for games like Hi-Fi Rush and then Hi-Fi Rush won awards like they wanted. And now they're cutting them. So nobody really knows what exactly Xbox is, like what's going on or what they're thinking about or what the next step is. Um, but the assumption is that uh, regardless of what they say moving forward, that they're going to be primarily a <laughs> online service and just offering um, a plethora of media as opposed to a game company. So. Well, that, I think that's not good. Uh, and I'll tell you why. Let me let me just say this up front. It's shite. It's garbage. But let me tell you why. Um, I know I'm I'm full of negative vibes today. It's just because I'm tired. And I'm sorry. But um, so the one like OG Xbox had some really cool uh, Xbox exclusives, and then the Xbox 360 had a couple. And then name me. Five on the Xbox One. You really, it, it's a struggle because at the end of the day, the Xbox One is a triple A machine. You can get almost everything on Sony, on Steam, on PC, on Nintendo. Um, there enough so that you don't care about missing the fact that they had four or five exclusives. Um, whereas Nintendo is built primarily on their exclusive IPs. Um, and Sony has been doing a great job over the last few years of building up their exclusive IP library. Um, I, I, I think, you know, if Xbox just wants to be a publisher, why do they even need a console? You know? I hear you. There are still good Xbox games. though, Like, um, you know, Rare Replay or anything attached with Rare was still Xbox exclusive. Um, so Sea of Thieves, which is just now, like, we're like eight years after Sea of Thieves or nine years. And now PlayStation can finally play that. But, you know, like Forza is a pretty good company or a pretty good IP for the company. Right. Um, I don't know. Like, they did Sunset Overdrive. That was Xbox exclusive. I think that they still know how to make good games. I just don't think they have direction. I mean, they don't have, like, identity anymore. Um, like, you know, like you said, Xbox, the identity was Halo. Uh, 360, yep. you know, it was, <clears throat> well, I mean, it was still Halo on the 360, let's be completely honest. But oh, then yeah. it was also Forza got really big on the 360 and all those other, their, their second and third tier franchises all got um, boosted by that. So, um, and now they don't, like you said, they're a, they're a AAA company and they just, they're pumping their service, their online service, and they should be. Their online service is good, but you have to have something for people to play. Like it can't. Yeah, but just at the end of the day, can the they just Call of Duty gamer? Yeah, but can they give us a, a Viva Pinata two or a, a Grab by the Ghoulies two? I'll take those. Well, there's already two Viva Pinata games, Billy. Actually, there's three if you count Party Animals too. But I yes, haven't... they should do another one. Yeah, <laughs> a... they could do more. A... Yeah. Also, you know, don't defend them. Don't defend Microsoft too much. They also made uh, Rare Studios do all the Kinect games. Instead of working on a new Banjo-Kazooie or a Banjo-3, they had them making Connectimals. Well, they didn't make them. They said they wanted them to spearhead the, the Kinect thing. And then they Rare, the original, well, by that point... Uh, guys like Seaver and the Stampers and the, are were already on their way out. Anyway, you know, people are like, "Why isn't there a new banjo game?" Um, I mean, the there people is. Who made, it's called ukulele. 
Yeah, but the people who like were originally involved with Rare, like the like the original pile, yeah, they're are also, well, they're old, dude. Like we're yeah. old. You and I are old. They are twenty years How older than us. You? Like the Stampers are in the sixties and seventies. You know what I mean? You can't you can't convince game companies to make the same game for forty years. Like that works if it's first party, but when it's like Rare, where they're like they've been a second, third party, that they're they want to do what they want to do. So the younger like, generation of development coming up through them, like, look, they made Sea of Thieves, and it was awesome. But nobody cared yeah. when it came out because it wasn't, like you said, it wasn't Banjo 3. It wasn't Conquer Super Mega Ultra Reloaded Swear Edition or something. It was things that they want to make now instead we of things that they're popular. We, we don't need another Conquers. I don't care what anybody says. Well, that's what everybody says, Billy. It's not anybody. That's what everybody wants. Ah, uh, that's because they like watching movies with fucking mid-platforming gaming at best. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's what the people want, Billy. Um, but <laughs> anyway, more Microsoft news. Um, so Sarah Bond, who's the president of Xbox, um, did an interview. I believe this was yesterday now. Yesterday, two days ago. So amidst all of this wishy-washiness with Xbox, um, she um, was talking about she thinks that they're in a better position now than they have been in a long time. And she believes that their engineering and building um, is going to make the next Xbox console the biggest leap ever in next-gen hardware uh, with both power performance and with their online service. Um, they want to focus on making delivering the biggest technological leap ever in a console generation for their next system. What do you think about that, Billy? Um, let's see what happens. I mean, where are we leaping to at this point? I mean, what specifically are you asking, Billy? I mean, like, uh, aren't all the major leaps done at this point? I mean, you they could make the next system so good that it outclasses the same generation of PCs. Great, they're gonna make the they're gonna they're make, gonna make a console that looks the characters look real life, it, you know, indistinguishable. Except for some reason, it's going to be saturated in brown and gray. So, and muted blues. Who gives a fuck? Billy, that's a little... I mean, Microsoft is also... So, we complain about PlayStation and their crossplay. Microsoft is way better at it because they are a computer company. Right, know, first, right. And a, and a game company second. So, their crossplay works great. And nobody yep. complains about it because the same Microsoft account that you used to play Xbox is linked to your, you know, your yep. Microsoft excel account and all that stuff so so it does to me it makes sense that they should have the most powerful system because they're also a computer like playstation make right. gaming pcs you know and microsoft makes you know systems for gaming pcs like you know it's not like people stopped using um you know windows and stuff on gaming PCs, they don't all use it but it's definitely there like and their programs are still definitely available and and part of the gaming culture. So having a, a really important system that still presses the PC you know, elitists and their specs on their highest end stuff, you know, that they brag about every year. Um, I think that makes perfect sense to give people who don't want to get involved in, in home computing the ability to play games that, you know, 120 frames per second and all the other stuff. So, you know, whatever. To me, it's like if their long-term commitment is to cross-play and that cross-progression and all that stuff and whatever else, cloud saving across things and all that, then make home console ridiculous. Just do it. Like, I don't think that has to be a company focus. I think they just should do it. So. Yeah. Why not? They're a computer company. They can do it. Well, if they don't, I don't know who, like, if not Nintendo. them, then who? Well, that's what I mean. Nintendo's never going to like put PlayStation and Xbox. No, they're, Nintendo. They're um, Nintendo is traditionally almost a full generation behind on specs for every console. It's just that Nintendo makes uh, games very specifically for their consoles. 
not really to be cross-platform, but to optimize what that console can do. So, you know, also they use bright colors, which is fun. Yes. Yeah, we do like bright colors. I, we like that. Lot. I'm, I'm not going to lie. Um, a big turnoff for PlayStation and Xbox for me is that everything is so muted and they try to do hyper realism so much that it that's boring to me, man. I want my eyes to be happy. I want bright colors. But it, more or less, if so, now you talked about Nintendo having its space, and now Xbox, even though they're cutting developers, um, pretty thinking about their next generation. Like, where does this leave PlayStation now? Um, Sony's you know still I mean? the they, number one revenue generating game company in the world. Correct, but like identity wise, like if they're chopping their com their you know IPs as well, does that just make Sony the 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 Final Fantasy Seven maker? Like, what are the, like what are they? I don't know. I don't know what's so um, that you can buy you a God of War machine. <laughs> well, that's the thing, like. You couldn't even do that. How how many? It was two years before PlayStation fives were like readily available. And I don't, I haven't bought one. Are they available? Can you buy one in there now? Like, can you go uh, to Walmart and buy a PlayStation? 5? I I to this day I have never seen a PlayStation five in Walmart. So then, like, <laughs> you know, what I'm getting at here. Like, what are we? What are they doing? Like, if they want to be the leader, is it? Are they like? Are there systems like the limited run games now? You just hype them by, you know, having small, you know, <laughs> small limited quantities. And then you're like, oh, you have to have it. Like, is that their game now? Like, right. I don't know. Um, I, I feel like it's really weird that um, they smashed Xbox and uh, people wanting their system as far as the PS5. And to this day, I don't feel like there was ever enough on the market, you know? Mm -hmm. So I'm saying like Xbox put out numbers, um, maybe not video game sales numbers, but their system sold just fine and, you know, didn't, wasn't hidden from people. Like people could get them if they wanted them. That should be your first thing is if you want people to do your online and play games, you got to have them available. Right. So, all right. Let's move away from video games a little bit. Um, did you, um, I guess we can, well, let's stick one more video game. Um, were you all familiar with the Suicide Squad, the uh, the Justice League game, Kill the Justice League? Did you play any of that? Did you watch any no. videos on it? Nothing? None nope. of it? Not interested Nothing. at all? Uh, I haven't Warner even Brothers... heard of it, to be honest. <laughs> okay, well, I did... Uh, Warner Brothers just reported their sales numbers on it, and they lost uh, two hundred million dollars on that video game between uh, it being expensive, um, and then it getting just absolutely crushed in the critical review and player base uh, by pretty much nobody liked it, um, and even well, the ones that did like it didn't really love it. They just kind of liked it. I mean. I, I, I think there's this weird thing where uh, uh, people outside the gaming industry will not let go of the fact that the license game heyday has been over for a long time. You know, we're not getting another Aladdin. We're not getting another Lion King. We're not getting another DuckTales. Um, mostly we're getting, you know, Donald Duck going quackers. You know, which is an okay game, but not amazing. Um, and every, everybody wants to license a video game and they want to dump all this money into it. But, you know, at the end of the day, a licensed video game, I feel, has more to prove than an unknown video game. Because a licensed video game, you know, hey, we slapping, you know, we're, we're putting... Disney sprites on Tetris, you know, we're reskinning yeah. a Tetris or something. Um, so I, to me personally, a licensed game has more to prove than an unknown game, and I, I, I just don't think people, I, I don't think the people green lighting these games are getting that. 
Understood. I think that there's still space out there for him, but yeah, I think that good ones. More, it's more fatigue at this point because one of the major gripes about the gaming industry is that companies like Warner Brothers are trying to treat it like they do their movie divisions, and they're looking more at spending you know tons of money on visuals and bringing in um, actors for voice acting, like big name, like regular actors, not voice actors. And I think that that's where the fatigue happens is that people want good games first and all the other stuff second. And Warner Brothers and other companies are thinking about the presentation first and the video game second. And that's where a lot of the the ire has come from these kind of things. And right. This game is a this kind of just brought it all to a spearhead because they were trying to capitalize on, you know, Suicide Squad and people loving Birds of Prey and all that. And instead, you get this like wishy washy uh, mess of a game that nobody seemingly really likes. So. Right. That sounds about right. Um, you know what game comes to mind when I think of stuff like that? So. If you look at it objectively, it's obviously a triple-A game, but I never found it particularly a good time. Uh, Marvel Ultimate Alliance. Yeah, that wasn't your thing? No, I I felt like, um, I'm like, obviously it's triple-A, they put a lot of money into it, but I feel like it missed the mark on being a fun game, you know, it, it just felt like, okay, we cleared this area. We got to move over here on the helicarrier. You know, we got to go do this. We got, but it never felt compelling or fun to me. And See, I always so, liked that series, but it's not, but it, it was still a good game. Even if you didn't like it, like you knew that the core elements were correct. Like if that style of game wasn't your thing, it didn't, it felt like it had less to do with Marvel trying to make money and more in them trying to build a video game base. Whereas now the Marvel games don't, they're like the exact opposite. They all seem like they're there just to make money to me at least. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Like Lego games. It's all the yeah. same. It's yeah. all the same. Just a different character. Lego star Wars, Lego Batman, Lego city undercover. You know, who cares? Fuck you, Lego. <laughs> I liked you back when you were yeah, Lego see, I like, racers. I like Lego games. <laughs> my, I have kids, so I like I, that's in my wheelhouse, you know. Thing. Yeah, Mike, you got. I, I just realized, man, you putting up with it today. You got a salty bill up in here. Yeah, you are a little bit, a little bit sad. So here, this next story will make I, you even more, even more sad. This is this, all right. This is peak bill stuff. All right. Um, <laughs> So GameStop, uh, one of your favorite companies, has uh, added to its board uh, somebody who used to work for PSA. And now GameStop is going to buy graded Pokemon cards. Like you can sell your graded Pokemon cards to GameStop and they will also sell them, uh, but only through Personal Sports Authenticator, PSA. And at the beginning, they're only doing cards graded like eight nine ten high graded cards that's all they're selling right now but they are going to expand to all psa graded cards buying and selling so now on top of you know <laughs> already not really being a company that's focused on video games even though they're called gamestop because they sell everything t-shirts and funko pops and all the other garbage they sell in their store now they're also going to do cards which they already did but not singles they always did packs of cards right um, but i mean so now they're, at... they're further muddying the waters of what they are as a company so. yep uh it all started when they bought out think geek and loaded their stores with their products and you know ever since then you're lucky if your local GameStop is 20 percent games yes so, yeah, why don't we whittle that 20% down a little bit and slot some Pokemon cards in there? Um, sure, I'll, I'll, I'll sell them some fake Pokemon cards. They already take fake games, you know? They don't educate their buyers well enough, the, the people that work in the stores. That's all there is to it. They so don't. We're talking, but the GameStop isn't going to accept 
Um, like they're not, you can't submit cards through GameStop. So they have to be previously ESA graded and authenticated for P- for GameStop to buy them. So it still will be hard to fake that kind of thing because I am yeah. sure they'll have to like, you know, those PSA cards have numbers on them, and I think you can yeah. compare it to a report. And that's things. that's fine, but let's be honest: if you're getting Pokemon cards graded, you're not you're a collector, and you're not trading them in at fucking GameStop. This is a Probably terrible not. idea. That's never going to take off. It's a I, little I just, too yeah. niche. I don't know who their the like target gonna, audience is. Well, no, who the, who's going to buy from there? I I know who the target audience is for selling them. It's people who got all inundated in the card market during COVID, thinking they were going to become millionaires, and now are stuck on a bunch of uh, low end graded stuff. But even right. then, we don't know what kind of margins GameStop is buying cards at. So what it might be good at the beginning, you know, like DK Oldies is with games when they want something or when they need it to stock their supply, they pay pretty good. So maybe GameStop. Oh will pay well at the beginning, but they won't last if nobody's buying them. You got to sell stuff to buy stuff. So. Right. That's true. So I guess it. we'll see. I haven't, I should, I don't collect Pokemon cards, but I should find one and try to go trade it in or just go on their website and see what their trade-in values are and um, see if it's for, good because for maybe games there's now? money to be made. Let's, let's take a look. Hmm? I'm keep talking. I'm gonna look. Keep talking. <laughs> All right, we'll move to another story, <laughs> and then, and then, um, we'll go back to Billy. Uh, so also video game, back to video game stuff. Billy talked about the Switch. So Nintendo essentially confirmed the Switch Two by saying that they're not talking about the Switch Two in a tweet. They um, they said that their next. Upcoming direct in June will be all software and that they will not be talking about the switch because they didn't call it the switch too. They said the, the switch, you know, the next generation of switch, but they said that it will be coming next year um, and they won't be talking about it then. So now people are um, in a fervor trying to figure out, you know, what kind of games they're putting off. Are they holding them off for launch titles? What's going to be coming? But this is the first time in a long time where Nintendo straight out came out and said, we have the next system, we're just not talking about it. Like, they didn't do that. Um, So they essentially said, at this stage, we cannot say anything more about the successor to the Switch. Uh, Today's announcement, we determined that the most appropriate expression was to use successor, the successor to the Nintendo Switch, and that all information will be released in the stages up to the launch we have done in previous hardware announcements but the the difference was them saying it um so that was the big news story is that nintendo straight out said no we have it this time instead of people uh you know gaslighting each other into thinking that nintendo has a the switch pro or whatever i mean how many times have we done this now you know zelda 30th anniversary or right you know i mean this is the first time where we've taken a nintendo rumor and made it into a concrete thing as opposed to people just speculating so it's very exciting if you're a nintendo fan exciting because there'll be bright shiny games <laughs> that billy like yep and so. we don't even know if it's going to be backwards compatible but we do know that it's going to be nso compatible correct there have been a lot of well, because there's been so many leaks on this, and that's probably why Nintendo felt like their hand was forced. There have been a lot of leaks that make it seem like they are attempting to use the same style cartridges um, or something similar moving forward so that the Switch 2 will be backwards compatible, or at least that they're trying. I mean, even if they just allow you to uh, play your downloaded Switch library on your Switch 2 of digital games, that's still a step. Um, cartridges are a bigger step because then people's physical libraries can be played on the next gen but just being able to play the last generation of games is important even if it's digital only since everybody's moving away from that yep Yep. did you did you find GameStop prices or they're not listing them no I didn't see anything all right so they're hiding and stuff yeah. <clears throat> but that's fine. We'll catch. We'll get them at some point. A later yeah. news story. Um, we'll get it. 
So we did talk about the Fallout TV story, um, the show coming out, and everybody loving on it. So at the end of, uh, so just today, um, May, Netflix releases its Nielsen or Nielsen releases Netflix and its streaming services numbers from last month, and Fallout that we of um, April eighth through fourteenth was the most viewed show in minutes uh, by 200% over the second closest show, which is Bluey, which gets a ton of watch uh, as parent uh, Bluey a lot of play. Right. <laughs> um, um, yeah, All Out had 29, almost 2,900 minutes, millions of minutes, and Bluey was next closest at 1,300 and um wild numbers um considering that we has like 150 episodes and gray's anatomy has like 400 episodes or something like that and fallout had what eight eight episodes yeah. i believe it was. yep so to have that many people spend that many minutes watching something um means that a lot of people probably watched it more than once as well right but it was good man it was good i was happy with it yes um the you know like the data is more it shows that things can succeed so the opposite of the the suicide hey, well, squad game so oh. moving so, well, yeah well that too but moving a game to a tv series can still be you should focus on it being tv series first game second right and at or, the same time like who boy did some of those fallout games spike recently so yeah. i'm setting up for a claim sale before we came to record and uh, I'm like, you know, I don't need any of this stuff. I got a ton of stuff on my shelf. And uh, I started pulling down games I haven't looked at in a couple years. And I have the um, Fallout 76. No, it was Fallout New Vegas Ultimate Edition on PS3. So, excuse me. I look it up on eBay. And it's not the greatest hits version. It's the regular version, which I guess is more rare. That thing's going for 75 bucks a copy right now, used. And I'm like, wow, I got a bunch of Fallout games. I'm going to be rich. But I'm, <laughs> but I'm not because I have like yeah, I Fallout, go, Fallout 3. I, I started thinking about it too. Nothing. The, the, the Fallout 3 floating around here somewhere. I haven't looked it up, but I was more in game like, oh boy, I'm glad I have that because I would hate to go chase it now after this, you know, yeah. I bought it because I had to, because there was no regular editions when I bought it. So I had to buy the special edition of the game, but um, it's nice to have it now and not be behind the curve where you went into right. you and you have to pay the, pay the, the troll toll to uh, people who have spiked the price on it. So. Do 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 do. So, Mike, let me let me ask you a question. This so, Billy, if you have no news stories, I have one more news story, and this one is this is very forward. So, it's very what? I lo- I I didn't hear what you said. You froze up for a second. Oh. I'm sorry. I said I have I don't have any more news. I have more Billy story and very Billy forward, very Billy Billy centric news story. Um, it hits it. All right, let's go with it. But you are kind of freezing a little bit. I don't. Know. Um. Anyway, we saw over the over the last weekend we finally received some new footage of the silent hill 2 remake and silent hill is a very much a billy thing um and it looks great um if you haven't watched the trailers for it it looks really really good and it looks like it stays pretty close much like they did with the resident evil games where it's the same game just looks a little different it's got a different feel while being the same thing but what a lo- what a lot of people were a little taken back by was um well let's well, just uh, let's ask the expert first Billy, what do you think about what kind of game is Silent Hill? Survival horror. 
obviously. It, it's creepy. It's well, atmosphere. And, and so what are the core elements of a survival horror game? Yes. I. What are the core elements of a survival horror game? Don't get killed. With Silent Hill, yeah. the, fog, the yeah. fog is always a big deal, which was originally instituted with because of console limitations and to make uh, a limitation of feature, which I always thought was really cool. Um, I don't know. I mean, survival horror, it's, it, it's creepy. It's atmospheric. So you what alarmed people, Billy, about the, about the most recent trailer is that it showed just a ton of combat. Like a ton of third person combat. So um, that's like a over little half weird. the trailer was combat. <laughs> um, that's a little weird because uh Silent Hill games have not uh traditionally been combat heavy and have um some of them have been very little fighting at all in them, you know. And that's why people, especially Silent Hill 2. The first, you know, a couple games were really, like you said, atmospheric. Yeah, what is this, fucking Resident Evil now? <laughs> exactly. And that's, like, that's why I brought up the comparison to how it looked. Because it looks, people are saying, well, it looks like, just because it looks like the Resident Evil remakes of 2 and 3, do we have to make it play like that, too? You know, like, can it still be its own thing? So there is concern, Billy. Concern about the Silent Hill remake because it looks good, but also uh, is kind of taking taking on other remakes or making people think of other remakes. Right. Yeah. We don't need, so for like you, if I wanted to play a, a half ass, uh, crappy survival horror game, I would play resident evil. I play silent Hill instead. Well, hopefully we'll be playing this one and enjoying it and not playing it because you feel forced to play it and then not enjoying it because they've changed. Right. Four elements. So we'll see when it comes out. Cause it's not out yet. Obviously we got some time, uh, it could come back looking like everybody wants it to, and then, and then huzzah, Billy! Then it's the Silent Hill game. So. Yeah. So we'll see. Uh, less combat, the better. Okay. Fine. And yeah, whatever. Um, <laughs> so, Mike, can we talk about current world news? No. Okay. Yeah. Go. Go ahead. That's fine. <laughs> Go ahead. The you are you uh currently aware of blockout 2024? No. No. All right, let me tell you what happened. So the Met Gala was the other night. Yes. And an influencer was posing in a Marie Antoinette inspired uh dress and filmed outside the Met Gala and it zoomed in on her face and she literally says let them eat cake and starts dancing um being that we have an active genocide happening in the world right now people found this extremely tone deaf um especially with the disparity in the United States between rich and poor <clears throat> and that gap gap growing every day now, she did release an apology video and tried to explain herself. And she did that weird thing that rich people do where they try to go in the most humble area of their house. Yeah, film. like on their porch on the side. So it looks like they only have like a like, yard and stuff. Drew Barrymore sitting crisscross applesauce in the kitchen of her uh, guest house. Yeah. You know what I mean? Ashton Kutcher and uh, his wife... Uh, after they wrote the letter of recommendation for of character for Danny Masterson, yeah. uh, they're sitting in front of an antique wood barn. But then when you see the whole scene, you know, this is shipped in custom built uh, antique barn wood wall right next to their pool in Los yeah. Angeles. Like, so she did that whole thing where she tried to find the most humble area of her apartment and then everybody's pointing out like didn't you just post a month ago a tour of your apartment and that your apartment takes up an entire floor in a, in your building and that you pay seventeen thousand dollars a month for it like so like the big thing that's come out of this <coughs> is 
people are like, hey, these influencers and celebrities only have what they have because we give it to them. And our attention breeds that. So the point of it is to block all celebrities and influencers. And um, they're like, people are showing graphs right now of like Jennifer Lopez, is, who was already on the way down because of all that terrible shit. It just drops off, you know, boom, boom. Uh, all of them, all celebrity social medias are just dropping off. And it turns out, um, I saw a marketing person talking about it and she's like, uh, I'm not supposed to really say this and I might get in trouble for my boss, but uh, you guys block out is actually working because whether you give a celebrity or influencer good attention or bad in attention, it's still attention and they still make money from it, yeah. right? Correct. But if you block them, Nothing they're in can be advertised to you. You know, if they're tagged in stuff by other people or companies, you'll never see it. Um, and so she's like, this is actually working. Like I'm marketing for a uh, influencer right now and I'm struggling to get her in front of people because of so many people have her blocked now yep. that, that uh, the input settings or say, you know, we're paying for this much coverage. And they're like, you know, we don't have that many available people to view this content. Yeah, it totally does work. And that, not just on celebrities and not necessarily just blocking, but that philosophy in general is great online. Um, obviously, I spend a lot of time on Twitter. And my philosophy has always been to stay as positive as possible. On my own content, if people come with negativity, I'm more than happy to respond to them and say, you know, you know, here's how you're feeling about this one thing. Um, here's my views on it. Not necessarily mine, but like I appreciate that she sent me a message or whatever like that. But I don't go chasing, which is what a lot of people do. To get your right. to get eyes on you on Twitter, a lot of people go chasing, go on other people's posts trying to uh, you know, contrarian and then link to their own stuff. And yeah, right. if you don't engage like with people like that, that cuts down their their numbers significantly. Uh, Absolutely, thrive on just attention on them, and when they can't get it, they'll go find trying to find it in a different way. So yeah, celebrities having their social media cut more likely not will just end up to be them being more annoying, more commercials, or uh, showing up on more talk shows that they wouldn't normally do or whatever. Um, on shows like Billy, they'll be trying to get on Billy's show to, to be on YouTube and stuff. So. <laughs> right. Yeah, yep. it does work. It I, does work because money talks, dude. Oh, like, dude, do you remember during the pandemic, uh, Gal Gadot's uh, Imagine video of all yeah. the celebrities trying to be like, we're just like you locked up in our houses too, except they live in these fucking palaces and they're all singing John Lennon's Imagine. I remember the morning that video came out. It came out. I saw it like probably within 30 minutes and I sent it to Dallas and I told her, I said, the fucking, Hey, please look at me because we're not in the spotlight energy in this video is like radiating through the phone. And I'm like, people are not going to like this because it's really giving off that vibe. You know, there's a worldwide pandemic, but please look at me, you know? Yep. And uh, by the next day, and even to this day, it is regarded as one of the most uh, tone deaf, horrendous things a group of celebrities have done publicly. So I didn't have this on the docket for today, but you got me thinking about it. Did you see the new? Do you um, want to dock it? <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> uh, um, did you see the new? Did you see the new iPad show that just came out two days ago? The new what? The new iPad. The new iPad. No, I slim. No, I do not pay attention to Apple products. They're a complete rip. Well, the it's not the product; it's the commercial that's getting the headlines. Oh, so okay. It's, uh, so it's um, uh, you know how there's all those press videos where like there'll be a, a hydraulic industrial hydraulic press that just like slowly crushes things. Yeah, and yeah. Like oh, the, I love those videos. Okay. Then you'll love this because that's their whole. That's the whole commercial. Is they take there's like a whole like like an artist studio 
<laughs> with like paintings and cans of paint and then uh like a whole like studio set for um like a band like a drum set and a guitar and all these other pieces of like musical equipment and art and they and the whole they put it under an enormous hydraulic press and they press and destroy all of this stuff oh, no. and then it presses down into the ipad and it that's uh, people are like ah it's just a commercial and you know this is good <laughs> and then um everybody who's involved in media and networking is like yeah no uh maybe it's just like sensibilities but especially in japan we don't destroy things for uh for a commercial, like, right, you know, right, and <laughs> what do you, what did you, what did you just do? Des destroy, uh, you know, fifteen thousand dollars worth of artwork and musical instruments that people would love to be able to afford, so that you can make a, a iPad look good. You know that, yeah, I get that. It's it's one of those tone deaf things, yep. you know. Like, so you, make sure to at, watch that because I'm sure yeah, it'll make you nice. I am happy, because you like um, that. Stuff, so. Yeah, at the at this point in time, man, uh, that you they can't apologize anymore, Mike. I'm I'm just gonna say it. I'm with the uh, with the uh, block out. I'm fully in the camp of eat the fucking rich. Um, you can't apologize anymore for not reading the room. Uh, yeah. If you don't know that this country and this world is struggling, while the rich get richer and people struggle for babysitters, for rent, for food. At this point, if you are tone deaf to that, you are willingly participating in what's making the situation happen. And that's why you're pretending you're tone deaf. You get it. Everybody yeah. knows what's going on. So yeah. eat the fucking rich. You you can't you can't apologize anymore and say, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't, I, you know, I didn't realize I shouldn't say let them eat cake while there's a worldwide genocide going on and I have homeless people fucking behind me, you know, yeah. like, shut the fuck up, you're lying, you knew what you were doing, you're a piece of shit. Yeah. Right. Instead of doing that, I mean personal to me instead of um you know listening to social media influencers complaining about not being invited to the met gala and all that stuff um so many more today like actually today even though we're recording this today and it's not being released today today is the uspf the stamp on hunger food drive I haven't seen any social media influencers of any type talking about the biggest food drive in the country. Um, we fill up my city, the the neighboring city. Wait, and then last year we today? also filled up all the food. No, it is today. It is the second, the second Saturday in May every year is the USPS food drive. So, um, so we fill I up our city, the neighboring city, and then last year we also filled up a thousand. Well, that's we'll do it next year though. I've done okay. a lot of it, so you don't have. To, but yeah, and then we even had a thousand pounds of food for the next city over. So like, instead of complaining about not uh, being able to go to events or uh, people not being in touch with you, if you did more positive social media outreach, like maybe talking about how people could donate food to their mailmen today, so we can take care of it and and fill up all the food banks. Um, there wouldn't be people blocking your social media accounts or complaining about how you talk to uh, celebrities about eating cake and uh, what you were wearing and nuke and all that stuff. So, so just a suggestion for next year to, for social media people, if you want to talk about the food drive, uh, I would be more than happy to give you all the information you need yeah. ahead of time. So, you know, when I do my uh, charity stuff, my benefits and stuff like that, my daughter, who is 27, never says you know, congratulations, good job, or I'm proud of you. You know what she says? Her response is always, do good recklessly. Yep. Do more and, good. Too. Like, never yeah. stop at the one thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I I appreciate that more than people that are like, hey, you know, you're, you're doing a good thing. Like, I appreciate that attitude because... Um, it, it just, it, it inspires me to want me to do more stuff. And whereas, you whereas, and you're good at uh, it. Huh? You're good at it. So you should yeah. do more stuff. And, you know, whereas when somebody's like, oh, you're a good person for, for doing this. No, you're making me feel uncomfortable. Just say, hey, keep doing it or something. You know, <laughs> like, 
Yeah, just don't, a simple thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like all the other stuff makes me really uncomfortable, you know, which is why we've discussed many times that I don't accept Christmas or birthday gifts. Yeah. I send them anyway, but you just I know I know you do, and I appreciate that. All right. But yours are always sentimentally based. Yeah. I, I you have to make them special, Billy. Make my kids make Billy cards and things. <laughs> <laughs> Dear right. T.O. Bill, happy yeah. birthday. Congratulations on being one year older and not being dead. Really right. proud of you. Yep. <clears throat> You're really pulling it off. Yep. <laughs> well, that's our show for today. Maybe we'll have a subject next week. Um, maybe not. We'll see. Maybe. Let's see. Maybe. Um, but we do to stay consistent. Uh, we'll do our what did we learn today, Billy? Did you learn anything uh, today in this episode? Yeah, actually. Well, actually, what's really sticking in my head is prior to recording what you were telling me about and uh i think it's a great thing mike to have something to tap on to make your point about your grievance okay i lost sorry i lost you for a second so oh, i didn't hear what i, what I was saying okay. that i learned that it's really good to have a visual aid to tap on to make your point and i was talking about your grievance like that i i mean it was prior to the show but it's really sticking in my head that you know you need that visual aid you know i do that's, yeah, and that, that's why I can't, uh, I can't, I always, like, get lost in that thing behind you, too, your only aesthetic thing. Um, yeah. I've always, like, your, your water bottle there really bothers me. Like, I can see wow. your very real water bottle against your very fake table behind it. Like, not the oh. table that it's sitting on, but the one behind oh. it. Like, it yeah. always, like, I always wanted to, like, move from one to the other, and I just, like, I probably lose more time thinking about that than I do. Yep. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> Well, one day yeah. I'll have a, a, a real studio yeah. and not the green screen studio. Um, I actually been thinking about that a lot. So um, I have a big enough room here to really hook it up. But, you know, just time. So what did you learn today, Michael? I learned that uh, when Billy is angry and tired because we had to switch the day that we're recording stuff because Mike gets called into work on USPS food drive day that he's kind of angry the whole time until he wakes up when he's talking about how angry uh, rich people and wage gap disparity and social uh, uh, social blight bothers him. Then he wakes right up. We go, we can, we can talk for 55 minutes about stuff and, him just be angry but then when you talk about rich people billy gets really angry so now i'm going to use that to my advantage in the future <laughs> <laughs> oh because bill's a real eat the rich guy look the american dream is phony yeah Mike. that's it i'm gonna <laughs> they they sell us the that's american I, I like i like it they, i like your energy bill they sell us big, the american big bill energy dream. and i'm here for it they sell us this american dream that we can be a billionaire so that we don't stop them from doing what they're doing. Because in the back of our minds, we always think that maybe one day we could be one of them. When in reality, everybody in this country, I would say 90% of this country, has more in common with the homeless person than a billionaire. Because you, most people in this country are only three months away from being homeless. If you all, if ev if everybody lost their job right now, 90% of the country in three months, 90% of the country would be fucking homeless. You have more in common with a homeless person than a billionaire, but they sell you this dream. Don't regulate the billionaires. Don't tax them, blah, blah, blah. Because why? Because they make you think that maybe you can be one of them. You're never going to be fucking one of them. If you was going to be one of them, you'd have been born one of them. See, this is what I'm talking about. I didn't even have to. I didn't even have to prod you that time. You just did it. So now I'm gonna do. I can use. I can use this all the time now. I'm really excited for the future <laughs> prospects of me irritating you when you're not excited. So, 
all right, well, you know, fuck it. <laughs> so this was a great show. I uh, look forward to more episodes of the Bill Tendo show uh, where Mike uh, uh, pokes at Billy and his uh, cultural sensibilities and the things that bother him because it gets a better uh, reaction out of him in the show. So I'll be moving that in. Look forward to future episodes. <laughs> All right. We'll see y'all next William. week. Yes. Have a good night.